fucking fish monster! Ow! I don't like being shot. I don't like having my doorbell molested by some unseemly naked satanic fish monster. Oh, understandable. I, I won't touch your doorbell again unless you shoot me again. Seems fair. What do you want? You're still dripping all over my comeback with a warrant doormat. Uh, sorry about that. I usually end up, like, all drippy. Uh, whenever I'm, like, not in water or, like, a uh, pool or shower or lake. Hurry up, I've got important Chinese live leaks videos to watch and I've already wasted shotgun shells on you. I would just like a moment of your time to discuss with you the Book of Mormon. Goddamn Utah's infested with Mormons! Leave! So, um, you don't want this free book and this, um, uh, lukewarm can of ginger ale? My lord bullet resistant fish Mormons, this wouldn't have happened to this shitty country if we elected that Mitt Romney to beat that Islamist Mormon Obama. Oh, I know him. Well, um, not like no know him, but like, I like the idea of Mitt Romney. Ah! Welcome to the Fear Fiction Podcast. In today's episode, the Fear Fic friends read SCP-6292 and react to its quality, but mostly, they just talk about the best types of food poisoning you can get from ice cream, the politics of skeletons, and some rather dicey mushrooms. Today's episode features drug-addled King Mob, Gardening Goth, Chelsea, and soon-to-be dead Palette if he keeps talking about state secrets. Also, Half-Life 3 Creepypasta. Sorry about that. Cold Kicks Open Breach the Podcast now. So Chelsea and I have a co-worker who drank four full throttles, two cups of sugared coffee, and a 32-ounce Mountain Dew, had a heart attack, and was curious as to why he had said heart attack. Yeah. Figured the diabetes would have got him first. You would think that? Um, I think he, that's what he was gambling on. Yeah. yeah. He gambled Why was it a heart attack? <laughs> I wanted diabetes. <laughs> I wanted diabetes. <laughs> I wanted to die of beaties. I'll just cut my foot off, could you? And, and I'm I'm hoping that people can tell what kind of person he is by the fact that he drinks full throttles. And the fact that he's just like, I don't drink soda. And then he brings in like a 32 ounce big gulp from the <laughs> gas station. Uh, well, it's just full of syrupy syrup. It don't count as no soda. It, it ain't soda. Just... It, it's true. If it comes from a fountain machine, then that's just water. That's just water. Yeah. Thus the name, Fountain. This is a valid point. Mm. And so uh, to bully him, we gave him a four pack of full throttles the next Monday as a get well gift. Mm. <laughs> the terrible thing is that he drank them after the doctor said, yeah, <laughs> stop doing that. Yeah, stop, stop drinking that. caffeine. And then he, he was just like, I'm going to do it. You can't stop me. I'll do it again. I'll fucking do it again. That's like leaving town for a week and abandoning your fucking alcoholic girlfriend with a crate full of vodka. Why does this sound like something? The perfect you've done? crime. The perfect crime. <laughs> <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny the nature of any of my relationships forthwith at this time. Uh, my lawyer, Bisme, says there's no statute of limitations on murder. And everything I say literally incriminates me at every moment. Oh, the incriminator. Yeah, it's my gift. A curse. <laughs> I've been blessed. My client has been gl blessed with a gift of self-incrimination. <laughs> blessed. Oh, man. So, uh, it's Feng Sui. Uh, 
ardent recommender of bad creepy pastas for us to read that he thinks are good. Lover has, of terrible things. Lover. <laughs> bad taste maker. I don't know why we keep reading stories that he suggests. There are so many or things. Keep him in the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> just constantly bullying him. Uh, <laughs> That's the new gimmick. We just bully the Discord. Well, every, every time that he has a, a issue in like the the vent channel, the vent your spleen channel, it's an it's an actual problem where I'm like, dog, that's annoying. Yeah, he's he's not creating his own problems. It's not like he's sitting down with four full throttles, drinking them, and then wondering why he had a heart attack yet. Yet he might he might do. He did eat that one, like kill yourself hot chip. Yeah, I, it did not go well for him. He he be bisexual, eat a hot chip and die. <laughs> he did create that problem for himself. Yes, that was a I, self-infliction. I, I'm I'm wondering if I should try that at some point. I, I, I don't know. It seems like you should and we should record it. Yeah, if that's only the thing. so I can keep it on my computer and watch it. Everybody that's who d- does that just like says like yeah i feel like my insides are liquid now which is probably a level of pain that i don't want from it oh do you want a fun fact you want want to know something fun no that happened to me one time i was self-inflicted um so uh chicken in the wood mushrooms (laughs) get away uh chicken in the wood mushrooms actually we're talking mushrooms yeah mushrooms uh chicken of the wood mushrooms they taste like chicken that's the name um, they're delicious, by the way. They do legitimately taste like chicken. Um, seventy percent of the population can eat them, no problem. Thirty percent, it triggers uh, pain sensations in your intestines, and it makes it feel like your intestines are going to just melt out of your body. Not actually happening, just feels like it. And uh, I ate like a pound of them without testing to see which percentage of the population I was in first, and. Based on this story, can you guess which part of the population <laughs> I am a part of? <laughs> that worked out well. It was so tasty, though. Do, do, you, do you have explosive butt guts after this, or is it? No, just... it was just like normal poop. Huh? It hmm. just—it felt like my intestines were melting, and I was just like, "Eh, this, this, this I, I brought this on myself." <laughs> Did you know of this 70-30 rule? No, not beforehand. So when it felt like my intestines were melting, I was like, maybe I should look into this mushroom I just ate like a pound of. Did you did you find them in the forest or? No, no, I found them in a grocery store. Okay, that's kind of crazy that the grocery store doesn't have a disclaimer on there. You would think, but uh, no. Th- this I is... appreciate it personally. <laughs> it's you know a uh, grocery store with consequences. <laughs> grocery store with consequences <laughs> look it pays to be an informed shopper in this age of bug paste and gmos oh well, shit well i'm sure that this is dated by the time this comes out but there was that uh tiktok instagram person i think it was instagram person selling the pink slime which was just flat out laced with seed oils which everything is and yeah. botulism <laughs> the seed oils Everybody, every, everything, everything has seed oils in it, and you got to find ways to avoid them. The botulism is a pretty easy bullet to dodge, but for some reason, no, that's that's where we're at. We're just yeah. selling canned, po- like bottled poison, sending it in the mail, and then getting mad when people uh, ask if it was regulated by the FDA, which is why you should not listen to anybody on Instagram under any circumstance for anything. I mean, it's just crazy to me because it's just like it's botulism. H- how how do you make something that does not avoid botulism, botulism? by advertising it as liquid botulism? <laughs> so yeah. so it, yeah, no, that's okay. So we have I don't know if we've told this story before, but we have an ice cream shop where we live called Jenny's Ice Cream. It's a nationally famous ice cream shop, but it's here in Ohio. And they had a listeria outbreak, which you know sometimes you just have things that happen. Things go wrong. And the good thing is they took accountability. They were like, hey, we had a listeria outbreak. Sorry, everybody. We'll do what we can uh, and we'll we'll shut down, investigate what happened. We're working and blah, blah, blah. They were they were above board about their mistake. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Before that, they had a seasonal flu flavored ice cream and they had to discontinue it because the FDA doesn't have a sense of humor. (laughs) 
<laughs> Chelsea, do you remember what the flavor was called? It was literally called influenza. It was just called influenza. And I and they I literally was... brought it out every flu season. It was hilarious. Jeff, that is gold. I love it. And what's what's super unfortunate is they should the FDA shouldn't have shut them down and say, like, no, you're not allowed to have an influenza flavor. They should have said, no, because of your mistake, you have to label one of your ice cream flavors as Listeria flavored ice cream. Yeah, that should have been the punishment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let the punishment fit the crime, I say. Yeah. That's what Hammurabi did with his ice cream vendors. Let the punishment fit the cream. Yeah. <laughs> and also, in regards to the pink slime, all I can say, you ever see a mechanically separated chicken? I've seen that video. I, yeah. I'm firmly anti-chicken nuggets. Why make them as nuggets when you could get them tendered? You have been saying that. I have been saying that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Why do chicken wings when you can do drumsticks just as easy? Why upgrade your chicken game? Get on yeah. a new level. Why eat chicken tenders when you can eat a whole chicken like the uh, Jennifer from Jennifer's Body? Yeah. <laughs> Why eat chicken flavored woodland growth? You, this is what when you Pete, can just drink mechanically separated chicken. Why eat the an actual chicken when you could eat mushrooms that taste like chicken that have a 30 percent chance of making your bowels liquefy? I like those odds, actually. <laughs> Given what the other mushrooms I enjoy do to my bowels, uh, I'm willing to roll the dice. And it's just the pain. It doesn't actually affect anything. If you can deal with pain. Pain is just weakness leaving the body, which means you can just eat more tomorrow. Right. Pain is just mushrooms entering the body. <laughs> That's no enlightenment. Nobody makes a sex joke entering there. the body. <laughs> no buddy make an off-color sex joke about mushrooms entering the body causing pain. <laughs> Hey, that's your wheelhouse 110 percent, buddy. I mm. wouldn't trespass on your yard. <laughs> so it looks like we're reading a story about gardens anyway. But oh yeah, that, allegedly, that brings it, allegedly. This brings us back to Feng Sway and his terrible taste in creepy pastas. Um we're we're reading something from the SCP Foundation because my two esteemed friends will not read SCP RPC wayward, backward, back rooms, room words, uh, any of those kind of stories anymore. So I have to inflict this onto other people, uh, which is uh, why I have Chelsea here who will do anything that I tell her to do. And I have King Mob here who will do anything that I tell him to do. We proved that in VR chat. We did in our secret <laughs> secure suicide sex closet. Yes. We will I never. Still, oh. <laughs> we have so many inside jokes we will never explain. I, I, I've, you know, whenever all the I the hugging and the kissing while the fuse is hissing in the suicide sex closet. Yeah, there's, there's really nothing to explain there. It is what it is. But uh, I, I, I'll, exactly I'll, as written on the ten. Whenever yes. people are like, no "Hey, mystery. D does your podcast have a lot of inside <laughs> jokes?" and it's just like, "No, oh, there's quite a few with King Mob." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like the Briscoe Protocol, we're never going to explain that. No, we'll never explain the Briscoe Protocol. Well, this is SCP-6292, which I'm sure I will fuck up over and over again. Never betray the Briscoe secret. And if we'll... you ask again, I'm a straight up kill your shit. <laughs> oh, dirty! The, so this is item number SCP-6292, <clears throat> object class, Ankrar, I, I, Ankor, Ankron. Archon. Archon. That's okay. I'm glad one of us figured that out because that was just breaking my brain. I've seen a book before. <laughs> I done like I done seen that book before. And what is that book, ladies and gentlemen? Points to the to the uh, congregation. The Bible. That's right. The Bible. Which You've is just a the dust book. cover for Ted Kaczynski's manifesto. It's a. Uh, it's back in like the times when nobody could read, and they're like, "I've seen the Bible. There it is. That's proof yep. of God. I can proof, read it. Proof religion exists. Right there. Right there. Uh, Genuine this, holy book. This ha has a picture of a medieval depiction following the fifth night event, uh, which might be similar to the Briscoe Protocol. We don't know. Uh, but it's it's art that I know Chelsea is familiar with. It's like skull peoples. Yeah, I think isn't that like my um, discord photo, actually? 
It used to be, I know. What, I'm pretty what, sure it is. I'm happened. pretty sure like the one that's like super happy and like just ecstatic about whatever flowers it has is is the one I chose to do a close up on. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to while you guys are reading hunt down who made that. But the point is, uh, special containment procedures, SCP-629. I just got a little something to say about this photograph real quick, man. It's funny about the march of time, right? You look at this. Back in the days of the plague, man, skeletons were busy. They contributed. They had jobs. And you look at uh, skeleton art these days. Uh, it's laying around. Well, that's... That's part of the issue is the, the reason that things are like that is because of the federal government. And we, we have these ske- like the family skeleton, the unit of the family skeleton has just been broken apart. I right? think it's kind of writes you out of the whole fucking work program once you die. And that's a shame. A lot of these skeletons are on disability a lot of them have issues. A lot of them don't take care of their skeleton wee ones. Like it's, it's a big issue, and it's it's like the third rail of politics. Nobody wants to talk about it. I'm tired of all these delinquent skeletons just laying around out in the street. And, and you know, we have this two party system. Uh, r- remind me again, which party is supposed to be advocating for skeleton rights? Exactly. It seems like it changes every six months. It's it's ridiculous. Very frustrating. Special containment procedures. The SCP's Clinton Foundation has gone out of their way, however, to provide more skeletons to the workforce. That's than true. Any other political <laughs> organization. <laughs> At least fifty-two employed, and those are good numbers. Well, the, the the bad thing though is that the Clintons are only doing it to contribute to the skeleton wars, right? Once the skeleton's made, they don't yeah, care about another, it. That's another shill for big skeleton, <laughs> big bone, <laughs> big bone. <laughs> uh, containment procedure has been deemed impossible, so they can't contain this shit. I think I think can't that's stop what these skeletons from gardening, man. I think <laughs> their passion. I think that that's what. Uh, Archon means is that they they it's like an event and so they can't contain it but they're like aware of it and they want to contain it I'll find out civilians reporting SCP 6292 after a fifth night event are provided misinformation (laughs) misinformation suggesting (laughs) it was a non anomalous human any further recovered historical materials referencing those events is to be immediately logged and stored to ensure that the significantly lower death rate during fifth night events remains unnoticed by the public. All foundation actions and military operations with severe death rates are to be conducted on such days. SCP-6292 is a sapient class X11 theologically on 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 (laughs) humanoid entity. It is the Oh, Jesus, why am I Esso reading this physical. paragraph? <laughs> Esophysical embodiment of the concept of death. Due to this, its physical state correlates to the phenomenon of death localized on Earth. California. California. <laughs> Fifth night events are periods of time. California during... love. Dun, 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 dun. And there's just a bunch of skeletons dancing. Just using the rib cages as a xylophone. <laughs> I dream of Californication, where Cal- the skeletons are all skateboarding. <laughs> just, a, just a bunch of skeletons screaming into the void as California screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Three skeletons howling at the moon t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> Fifth night <laughs> events are periods of time during which SCP-692 temporarily lowers its activity. <laughs> as a result, creating small and almost unnoticeable periods of... That's all Greek to me, don't... <laughs> that is Greek to me, too. Omega... Okay, Greek. class scenario. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's Omega... Okay. Sorry, we have to, uh, according to the uh, SPLC, it is the... Uh, I'm not going to say yeah, it's just, no. it's just a spicy okay. It's a spicy it's a okay. Spicy okay. <laughs> Class scenarios on a regular basis. For more details, see Discovery. They're all uh, spicy okays in, in this day and age. They are. Yes. 
You never know. You're rolling the dice. All right. Star Trek Discovery SCP-6292 has been known well, to I guess the fa- I don't have to read a paragraph. <laughs> Rude. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm confused. You only invited me here to ignore me. <laughs> Acceptable. <laughs> Discovery SCP-6292 has been known to the Foundation since its founding in 1870 was originally discovered due to the widespread nature of fifth night events and their documentation throughout history. To prevent a significant decrease in death rates during these events, the Foundation has even undertaken massive organized efforts, such as the delegalization of skeletons in the United States. <laughs> the 20th century, to prevent all fifth night events from occurring altogether, like all previous attempts, this action had no significant effect on the reduced death rate and was repealed. Skeletons were legal once again. (laughs) Oh, no. The anomaly has evaded the Foundation contact, however. However, this is is where we're at with with, uh, the Supreme Court, is uh, I'm I'm glad that they legalized... Which skeletons are voting for what? The nation of necromancers dividing new laws. That's the thing, is you have to realize that all of the Supreme Court themselves are skeletons, which is why they have a voting record that shows such adamant support for skeleton rights. It's it's why they have so many closed-door meetings. As soon as the chambers are sealed, they slip off their human suits and dance <laughs> around. <laughs> That's they, they never actually pass anything. They just get some intern to write up their decisions, and they they just spend the whole night having bone and, orgies. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 and the reptilians clap and cheer. It's their favorite show. Uh, they're, just, anyway. they're, just, they're just like, wh- what is it? The humans they they want to keep other humans inside humans. Whatever. That is no nothing to do with my bone business. Liberate the bones. <laughs> This, it so, is, it's just a it's just a matter of time before this goddamn necrotic uh, Supreme Court bans all flesh. And oh who's no. gonna go door to door doing the confiscation, huh? That's well that that's a different that's issue. That's the fifth night event, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's the secret of the fifth night. <laughs> the secret of the fifth night is they come and harvest your skin and throw it into the, the flesh pile, and that's how they make chicken nuggets. That's a secret. Yes. Mechanically separated souls. So, so just uh, uh, let's recap. All right, a lot's happening in this story. So, I just want to be clear about this: the Supreme Court, which are actually skeletons behind closed doors, are voting on policies that will end up stripping regular citizens of their skin so that they can be turned into grotesque chicken nuggets for the Supreme Court and their other bone overlords to eat. And the question you really need to be asking yourself is, how did McDonald's wind up like this? (laughs) Blood on the counter, dead bodies behind the counter shit. Guess I must have just blacked out again. (laughs) Oh, story of my life. Black out, wake up in one haunted McDonald's. You know, haunted Wendy's. Haunted Taco Bell. Anyway. The anomaly has evaded Foundation contact. However, a breakthrough occurred on 0209-2012, during which the Foundation was able to obtain the recording of a fifth night event, the Supreme Court transcripts, localized within Steve's Best. There's a little footnote on that. Where the hell is it? Probably down at the bottom. No, a pub located in Chicago, United States. Thanks, footnote. Chicago. Chicago. Oh, eventually implanting SCP-6292 with a location tracker. See the following log for more details. Begin log. That's what what a robot says when it goes to shit down. Sit sit shit down. Yeah, sit down to <laughs> take a shit da- shit down. Well, it starts to shit down. And it begins log. Begin log. <laughs> just just makes the sound of an old um uh, of an old. Oh my god, was the copy machines like just like slowly shitting anyway. Nah, ten ten begin log, twenty go to (laughs) ten. Somebody out there remembers. (laughs) Endless robot shitting. That's that's the level of our humor. Yes. Listen, they can't all be witters. It's a rather basic joke. 
we just had a you know run rundown of what the Supreme Court is actually doing, and and that was a really smart joke because it was based on the truth because that's it's real, and and then we just wanted to decompress with a little robo poop, okay? Yeah, I mean it's been a stressful day, so you get a little uh, automated glass table action. <laughs> automated glass table action. <laughs> That's that was the issue with Jenny's is the listeria went right into your mouth. <laughs> begin log. Recording begins with like SCP. did they aim it or did the it just pop up off the ice cream like Popeye spinach out of the can? No, they use the little spoons. Uh, no. SCP six two nine two sitting at a bar alongside civilians in its vicinity. <laughs> Empty cups and dishes lay haphazardly. SCP-6292 appears to be severely impaired, swaying alongside the beat of a song playing inside. So I'm guessing, okay, it's death. All right, all right. All, all I can, all I can fucking see in my head is that uh, that Hellboy uh, panel. Don't mess with me, lady. I've been drinking with the skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we're just going to call SCP-6292 death from now on because it's death. It's just the Grim Reaper. So the Grim Reaper, the Grim Reaper says, I fucking tell you, Steve, I'm death. (laughs) Okay. I guess, I guess death is going to be, um, it's going to be Mr. Twin Peaks. It's it's going to be Gordon Cole. (laughs) I'm fucking telling you, Steve, I'm death. Yeah, sure. Laugh. And pigs can fly, right? You're you're not doing the obvious here. What? Care to elaborate on that? Care care to elaborate on unknown one? No, never mind. I am very confused. It's the David Lynch meme. Eraser head. Oh, oh, okay. I'm I'm so confused. It's, o- it's over, it's ruined. Never mind. Oh right. you gold and you just shit on it. It it was a golden goose and we killed it. Yeah. Get all the gold at once. Get all Obviously. the gold at once. That's the obvious play there. Yeah. Unknown That's says what you do every time. Unknown one says, "Yeah, sure." Laughs and pace can fly right now. Inspector Gordon Cole. First of all, fuck you. <laughs> Second off, do you know how hard it is to be the old goddamn Grim Reaper? How sad it is to get called in a pile of. I'm losing my shit. God damn it, pal. What? Can we just do death as Vince McMahon? It's what needs to happen. Yes. First of all, fuck you. Second off, do you know how hard it is to get the goddamn Grim Reaper? How sad it is to get called in to send a poor little small innocent jobber back to the <laughs> back to NXT. <laughs> You're fired. Uh, unknown to tell us what's going on. A baby? You send babies to the underworld? Exactly. I'm not going to keep a consistent voice for this. <laughs> anyway, that's fine. Anyway. As SCP-6292 goes to drink from a nearby glass, the store manager is seen entering the room, pushing the bartender aside. Manager, sir, how much have you had to drink so far? SCP-6292 slams his drink down onto the bar table. I'm literally the grim fucking reaper. I've not had a nearly enough to drink. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. SCP- Care to elaborate on that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. SCP- Finally. Yes. I do scoffs. Betty going in the background here, Elias. Are you fucking my balls here? <laughs> you know how much shit I have to deal with? But you get... Ugh. Either you leave or I call the police and have you escorted into your prison cell. This is just like 1984 by Stephen King. (laughs) In log. Afterwards, local authorities arrived soon after to apprehend the Grim Reaper for indecency and public intoxication. What what indecency is there? We we should ask Abysme. Showing his bones. Yeah. You can't mm. just show your bones to a lady like that. Yeah. You can't, you can't just. The only socially acceptable bones to see are your teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's awful. But, you know, yeah, those why make skeleton it... escape tunnels? Mm-hmm. <laughs> skeleton <laughs> escape. No, that's that's why I 
have a policy of of knocking out my teeth. That way, people can't see my any of my skeleton. <laughs> mm. Cover yourself. Be decent. Inshallah. Authorities refuse. Put your skin back on. Authorities refuse being the Grim Reaper as a valid reason for the Grim Reaper from custody. Instead, it was released the next morning following Foundation intervention. Update. A, by unanimous decision, the Foundation Classification Department, it was later decided by any intervention with the entity or containment effort should not be attempted due to them posing an inevitable threat to spicy OK class end of death scenarios occurring. Too so they're class. So they're not going to contain the Grim Reaper because that would be dangerous and probably bad. You probably want uh, people to die. I know we shit all over Fang earlier, and uh, we will continue to do so in the future. But I actually kind of enjoyed this. This was a this was a fun one. It wasn't terrible. It was okay. It was fine. I did it was enjoy inoffensive. that. It was pretty inoffensive. I, I would say that in the grand scheme of things, it it didn't blow me away. And I, I, I'm fine with comedic version of death. Death being an alcoholic. Yeah, and death being it, a sloppy drunk is almost... It, it almost smacks of a Terry Pratchett idea. Yeah, it, it, it kind of does have... Um, uh, what's the name of that? God damn it. Why am I struggling now to, to remember it? Good, good, good omens. In, good, good omens. omens. Yeah, it's got the good omens thing going. Which is on a, a good read, bit. and I highly recommend if you haven't. I will especially, say though, especially it's now no, with Neil Gaiman blowing it up. It's a no. It's no Terry Pratchett though. <laughs> no, it was Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. It, it, well, that's what I'm saying. Is like this is this is not on that level of writing. I know. I know that's like comparing apples and oranges. Uh, but, if you're expecting a Discworld like uh, read, uh, you're not really going to get that. Well, I'm saying that like this story in particular is is fine and all, it's serviceable, but I would expect a little more tooth if you're dealing with the concept of like death. Period. They they didn't really think of any jokes. Is, is, we don't it, talk it, about the death period. The death. Period. <laughs> the death period. Also you know how many known people as people died in the day of all the blood. This is uh well what you're talking about is a revenge period, but yeah, it's I, a revenge period. I I just don't know that the story had enough tooth there. Like if you compare, and this is this is a very to, to illustrate my point, the Family Guy episode early on when they had death as a character had more concepts behind it than this did. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. this didn't have a whole lot of meat on the bone. It's a one note snapshot, and it's amusing. <laughs> yeah, but do you do you want a one sn- note snapshot on death? It's something that could be fleshed out, like giving him just like this weird fucking character trait. It's it's there, kind of fun. We all we all know death. I, he I wants was, us every day and lingers over our bed as we try to sleep. It definitely as has. Hand goes numb, he and he just toes. whispers he in your ear, "One piece land. at a time, King Mob. One piece at a time." It definitely has. Uh, some tooth to it, but I don't know that it has a whole lot of gristle or grit, you know? Two of the things I look for in any quality steak. Mm, (laughs) Steak. I get some extra grit on that. I I, I don't know. That's those it, are it, it my does feelings. its it does its thing. It does do its thing, and it things it, it, it the things that it does it does do. But no, and again, like with it being a snapshot, imagine some some other article referencing death, right? Further on down in the SCP. Okay. You now know this really weird, silly thing about death. Yeah, I guess. Uh, like again, it's all flavoring for a big picture. I, I'm not just shitting on this story to shit on it. I I am just trying to play devil's advocate here of like, yeah, it was fine, but I just wasn't blown away, and I feel like maybe well, I wasn't blown death, away. I'm... I feel like with death, I should be blown away. Like if even if it's supposed to be comedic, I would want to be blown away with the comedy. If it's going to be played straight, I want to be blown away with blown the away. But I want to be blown by the straight. <laughs> I want to be blown by a gay skeleton. <laughs> so that was shorter gotta, than I got to be by a straight as a fucking dominance move. Here, here's what I'm here. Here's what I'm thinking. We're going to read Half-Life 3. OK, we're reading Half-Life. Standing. It's finally I call, out. I call Gordon. I call uh, Alex's uh, oh. jacket because I'm sure it smells like her armpits because she probably doesn't have a shower. 
I've done I call it in VR. Hugger. It is unpleasant. <laughs> Chelsea would be a face hugger. <laughs> <laughs> Little face crab. <laughs> no face crab, no. <laughs> Half Life 3. All of this is totally fake. Nothing happened. It's just a creepypasta. By me. Enjoy. Oh, holy and shit. Creepypasta by me. A creepypasta. I've, it's crazy. Hello, everyone. Something really weird happened to me. When I was playing Half-Life 2, I enjoyed the game. The world was that normal. Was Everyone, everything was normal, except one thing. When I hit it one day, it was still normal. But when I got into the game, the map started normally. For some reason, the chat activated. The My chat father was, beat me as he normally did. My put father. put down those video games. My father. Was a hacker. <laughs> Half-Life modder in a fiend. <laughs> My father was a TF2 aimbot. <laughs> he said offensive things and then quick sto- scoped to people from across the map. The chat was activated. Just why so no scope? The chat was never activated in any Half-Life game except Half-Life 2 Deathmatch. Anything that I typed in chat, it wasn't the message that I wanted. It was a link to a website. I clicked it, and it took me to a page. This page was blank. There was only one button on this page. The button's text said, download Half-Life 3. I was very Holy confused. Holy shit, seems legit. That seems legitimate, and I would, you know, you gotta risk it for the brisket. I thought Valve would never make a Half-Life 3 game, so I, I just go ahead and click the button. I thought Valve would never make a Half-Life 3 game like they normally don't. When I clicked it, a file started to download. Hot singles in your area. The file... They the are downloading. Sent. They're coming. <laughs> They're, co- <laughs> They're gonna find you. <laughs> the name of it was uh, HL3 oh, wow. Insta000.x. It took 12 minutes to download. When I executed the file, it showed up in the installer. I followed the steps and installed it. When I got to the desktop, I installer. saw a file. Installer. I'm going to download Half Life 3. I saw and play a... it now. <laughs> Snow, Snow, Informer, anybody? Okay. Oh, a file sorry. called HL3. The file's icon was a red Half Life 3 logo. I was very excited to play Half Life 3. I executed the file and started the game started up. When it started, the Valve logo in the intro screen wasn't there. Instead, there's not a lot happening in this. There, there's a lot of words, but there's nothing happening. But don't you see? This is just to illustrate how normal the day was <laughs> before the insanity ensued. Let me let me just tell you, this story is incredibly boring, so it's perfectly believable. <laughs> yeah. mm. That's that's the dead palace strategy of writing. The 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 epitome of Ashcan right here. Instead, the title screen was black and there was only one button. The button was start new game. I clicked it and there was only one chapter. It was named game. 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 And the icon of it showed a Half Life Three logo, a red Half Life Three logo. It's the all game about was... the game and how you play it all about game. Oh, no, God, I'm flashing the bin, you're going to pass. ass off performing the game at fucking WrestleMania. And he's just slurring every syllable. And he says, I am the game and I want a steak. <laughs> I am the game Look and I up, want to go to Texas Roadhouse and get a steak. And some rolls. Go to the Golden Corral, watch the fights. Are you talking about the fights on the TV or the fights over the food? <laughs> I'm I, I talking like the, about one particular fight. <laughs> I, I like the idea of people going to Golden Corral and getting into fights over the buffet of just like, <laughs> I need this and I need uh, like, that's the last roll. I need that. And they and they get into a fist fight over it. And like as I, they're fighting without missing a beat. The woman that like a waitress just comes out and just puts more rolls out <laughs> over them as they're fighting. I had a similar experience at a at a buffet once. I was uh, cleaning out this hoarder's house, and the guy who was paying me tipped me out in some uh, meal comp tickets at a local casino that he had won. 
Hmm. Well, anyways, um, I'm like, shit, I'm going to take my grandmother out for a nice dinner for a change, you know? <laughs> At the Golden uh, Corral. Yeah, no, well, we get there. I wish. I wish. That was the quality of what happened this night. Uh, we get there, right? And the line is through the roof. They, uh, by the time we get there, they are completely out of food. They're still seating people just to get rid of the comp tickets. Oh, no. And I literally had to get into a shoving contest with a man to get the last rib for my grandmother. Like, it, get bone issues, it, it man. It was Heidenreich, Alabama, doink style. It was fucking silly. <laughs> 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 oh boy anyways anyways by the way look up heidenreich alabama doink it is the <laughs> epitome it is the peak it is the mecca it is the crown jewel of all that is in professional wrestling i just it's, thought you were making that sentence up no, no it's it's no. literally a wrestling match outside of a golden corral it is yes. the most unbelievably cringe thing i've ever seen it is the most pro wrestling thing ever seen in the worst way possible (laughs) it is it is a jewel to be honored and revered oh my god he's he's pretending to be a clown outside of a golden corral that wrestles it's um I don't know how you pretend to be a clown. Normally, I think that you just put the makeup on, but this man somehow managed. Well, he can't to... even do the makeup. He's wearing a clown mask. Like yeah, a what a lazy hood. bitch. Yeah. Oh boy. That's I just, guess that, that's just the way of Alabama doink. <laughs> Alabama doink. No, it was the kids in the crowd, right? It would just. Oh, we see you, clown. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my shit. <laughs> no, you. You, you ain't my friend. Clown, I told you a bunch of times already. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Chelsea. Uh, mm. Where the fuck we are here. Uh, the okay. game booted up like normal. When I started, I had all the weapons, but when I equipped a weapon, the weapon was removed from my inventory. Oh, heck shit. I didn't realize you weren't done when I went off on that rant. I thought we finished that paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> now I no, feel we were like very close ass. to it. But yeah. anyways, that was a night version of City 17. There were no citizens, no Metro cops, not anything. This was very abnormal. I was very confused. I decided to walk around but like I normally do, but nothing was normal at all. But as, as soon as I was walking th- through the road, when Alex Vance appeared, she was not how I remembered. Her eyes were black. She was holding an axe with blood, and she had blood spattered on her shirt and pants. I got so scared, I peed a little and a lot. Turns out the little bit of pee was just lubing up for the main event. (laughs) I got so scared. Oh, I already read that one. I moved one step back. She began to chase me with an axe. I was running and running. While I was running, I ran. A distorted version of the ha- of a Half-Life 2 song was playing. Creepy Alex was still chasing. Was this written by Trump? You know, Creepy I- Alex, such a Trump nickname. The, listen, I saw I saw her. She had a uh, she had a giant we all, axe. Yeah. We all know what she did. She uh, had an axe, and uh, we didn't like it. I can't do it. Looking I'm just I'm just gonna say it, folks. She's she's gonna kill you. Okay, she's yeah. gonna fucking murder you in your sleep. Yandure no Alex good. Vance. She 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 wants to come at you and cut off your skin with an axe and wear it. I'm just telling you what we know, folks. All right, we all know this. Yeah, these are the facts. <laughs> okay. Um, now I lost my fucking play. So uh, creepy Alex was still chasing me. After exactly six seconds, the environment turned red and my screen turned pitch black. Which hid the red. I don't even know how I noticed it. Then another map loaded. This time it wasn't a night version of City 17. But it was GM underscore construct from Gary's Mod. It also was not how I remembered. The map skybox was entirely black. All the map's textures were red. And there were dead citizens on the floor. A well, message from Creepy Alex. 
in that, the that's, canopy. That, that's only scary because it's citizens and not subjects. Uh, Alex X. Well, you are officially 3D. more free in, in City 17. <laughs> I guess <laughs> that's that's about where we're at. I was scared and replied, Internet One, what? Who are you? Why is this map like GM Construct? And then Alex said a bunch of nonsense. Then creepy Alex appeared in front of me and everything turned black. A cutscene played. This cutscene was showing Gordon Freeman in a dark place. <laughs> Just mentally. He was only crippled, drinking and <laughs> staring at a rope. <laughs> He, the he's not TV suit would not let him die. This is what we're learning is that Gordon Freeman, uh, he, he knows how to talk. He's just not because he's overwhelmed with crippling anxiety. <laughs> he, he only knows how to express himself by like whacking people in the thigh with a crowbar. It's just like, do you, Which do you is want a healthy male activity? He's like, do you I cannot stress this enough? She, she's just like, hey, do you want to um, get some chicken tenders and just like gently taps her on the thigh twice with <laughs> with a crowbar? Yeah, I do. Taps it on the table. Morse code. Bronk, bronk. <laughs> Creepy Alex appeared in front of her. Creepy Alex appeared right in front of him. She slayed Freeman's body with her axe and Gordon Freeman died. I got so much scared. Then uh, creepy uh, Alex. Every, everything turned black, and let me tell you, folks, I uh, I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. Okay, listen, it's not. It wasn't one of the good blacks. Okay, listen. <laughs> then creepy Alex looked at the screen and started getting closer and closer. As soon as she touched my screen, the game froze and crashed. I tried moving the game into the recycling bin and emptied it, but it popped back up on my screen. Okay, folks, I'm just telling you the facts. I executed it again, but this time the background was red and there wasn't a start new game option. But instead, there was nothing, all right? That's what you're going to get with Sleepy Joe. You're going to get nothing, all right? Creepy Alex, at least you get an axe. That's something. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just telling you the facts, folks. I, 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 I want I – just the more extreme a, a politician's rhetoric is – Followed by the phrase, I'm just telling you the facts, folks. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how I know that I need to vote for them. They, they are giving me, me, the facts. If, if they're just up at a podium and they're just like, listen, I'm I'm just going to tell you the facts, folks. Um, let, me t- let me tell you something. Whales, a politician can trust me, an alleged terrorist, with the facts? How can I not give him my loyalty? Listen, I'm just going to tell you the fact. I'm most. I'm just going to tell you the facts, folks. Whales myth. All right, that's a that's a myth perpetrated by big whale watching. All right, I went out whale watching, didn't see no goddamn whale, and uh, they gave me a refund to come back, and they showed me pictures of whale. I know that they were photoshopped. I'm just telling you the facts, folks. Uh, uh, where? But instead, there was nothing. Just the Half Life Three logo and a red background. A button popped up called do not click this i clicked button and my computer blue screen went of to death. truth.social <laughs> went to truth.social and hit a green screen <laughs> blue screen it, i hope you enjoyed my pasta. That'd be a red screen there's the color blue is not allowed Bye. most colors aren't so that's the end of the story all right hope you enjoyed my pasta bye hope you, hope you enjoyed my pasta <laughs> Wow, what an underwhelming Half Life story! I, I I I picked the worst possible Half Life Three troll pasta to ever read. I feel bad because this is a twelve year old. I do, I yeah I don't know it's it's it it's, it's, it's 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 saying things like I got so much scared so I'm thinking that it knows what it's doing. I don't know. I, I I feel like it's somebody who's just kind of dipping their toes into writing. So maybe like eighth grade, maybe more like 14. Maybe. Yeah, I, like, it, it feels like somebody tried to do something. They didn't want to get rid of it. So that, you know. And instead they the showed the entire internet. Yeah. But, That's you know, you... like like as a joke. Mm. Like, haha. Because I just thought it'd be funny. Yeah. Well, there's only one person who can truly tell us whether it was a 14-year-old, 12-year-old, or 
a legitimate attempt at a troll pasta. The comment oh. section is the only people that can tell us. This has been the Fear Fiction Podcast. Your hosts were King Mob, CF Comer, and DP. Beats by Abby. Art by CFC and edited by Elias the Intern, who messed up the editing on the Prasicor episodes. Subscribe to Fearfic for more of Elias's wanton mistakes. Move into a new apartment. Hear strange noises at night, like if a girl was weeping in the bathroom. Spooky AF. Next night, hear chair moving in the kitchen. Really scared. Ask my neighbor. TWF. Tells me the couple I bought the apartment from had a daughter. Around my age. She committed suicide a few months ago. Parents had something to do with it, apparently. Her ghost is probably stalking the place. At night. Put a piece of paper and a pen on my desk. I hear things moving in the kitchen again. Shout into the air. I'm not your parents. What do you want? Could you write it down? Start hearing whispering. Fuck this shit. About to leave the apartment, but the bathroom door gets shut in front of me. About to fucking die. Sudden idea. Pull of pajama pants. Scream. If you want to kill me, at least give me a blowjob, you crazy bitch. Feeling of something grabbing my dick, but I can't see anyone. Air tightens around my cock like a weak vacuum. Feels like an invisible person is sucking my cock. Suddenly a force pushes me onto the bed. Air tightens more around my cock, and it feels like the air moves rhythmically around my dick. TWF, the ghost chick is riding me. Come. Wake up next morning. Was it a dream? Go take a shower. Come back to get dressed. Notice the pen I left on the desk is on the floor. Notice there's something written on the paper. It was fun and all, but we are really different, so, you know, but we can still be friends. 6 weeks pass so far. Complete silence every night. That feel when not even a ghost wants to be my GF.